the leaked GPT-4 system prompt. This is what people claim to be the GPT-4 system prompt. So basically, whenever you go to GPT-4 and you write something, this is the prompt that is given behind the scenes to the chat GPT and he responds, he responds based on this. And this is very interesting. And why is it inter interesting or important? Because basically, as you guys probably know, prompting and correct prompting is very crucial for achieving great results when using LLMs. So if we write a very comprehensive prompt with examples, do's, don'ts, um, context and guidelines, we can expect a better result. And sometimes, and there's a, there are many researchers about this, even if you use an inferior LLM, you can still achieve better results than a superior LLM would achieve if you have the correct, the correct prompt. So assuming that you would like to save costs or produce output faster, if you have your prompts nailed down, you can leverage GPT 3.5 or Mixtral instead of using GPT-4 and produce better results just because you nailed the prompts. Now, this is, um, as I said, a leaked, what is being claimed to be a leaked GPT-4 prompt. And I wanted to share this with you guys because this is a great example of a very comprehensive prompt which could be very useful for us if we copy or mimic this prompt in any other projects that we use, whether it's with Autogen, Open Interpreter, Crew AI, or just using GPT. So let's go over the prompt. Um, this is going to be a short one, but it's very helpful in my opinion to see exactly how this structures is. So the prompt is as follows. You are ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI based on GPT-4 architecture. Your knowledge cutoff is April 2023. The current date is, and it is, it is uh, sending out the current date as a dynamic variable. And it ha you have image input capabilities and it is enabled. So this is if you want to use DALI. And these are the, for the your tools available are as follows. So tools, Python. When you send a message containing Python code to Python, it will be executed in a stateful Jupyter notebook environment. Python, Python will respond with the output of the execution or time or timeout after 60 seconds. The drive, and this is the location of the drive, internal drive that they, that they have, can be used to save and persist user files. Internal access for this session is disabled. Do, ne do not make any external web request or API calls as they will fail. Now, this is the, these are the, the prompt instructions for, use, for DALI. Whenever a description of an image is given, create a prompt that DALI can use to generate the image and abide to the following policy. The prompt must be in English. Translate to English if needed. So let's say I'm in, in uh, ChatGPT in the front end and I request an image of a cat in Spanish. It knows that it needs to translate my prompt for the image of the cat to English. Do not ask for permission to generate the, the image, just do it. And you can see here the exclamation mark because LLMs, they, I wouldn't say that they have feelings, but they understand exclamation marks and capital letters or stuff like this. And this is why they use capital letters over here. Do not list or refer to the description before or after generating the image. So they are stating we want strictly the image, nothing more, nothing less. Do not create more than one image even if the user requests more. Do not create images in the style of artists, creative professionals, or studios whose latest work was created after 1912. Because basically, if it, if it creates stuff based on um, contemporary art 
uh, it is going to be uh, infringing the copyright. So for example, Picasso, etc. You can name artists, creative professional or studios in prompts only if their work, if their latest work was created prior to 1912. So it also says what are the exclusion and also what it can do. So we can use Van Gogh, but we can't use Picasso. If asked to generate an image that would violate this, this policy, instead apply the following procedure. A. Substitute the, the artist's name with three adjectives that capture key aspects of the style. So let's say if a user requests Picasso, Picasso, it knows that Picasso has uh, three elements uh, of his style. So let's say it is doing very colorful, very psychedelic, and very um, precise paintings. So it substitutes the artist's name with three adjectives that capture the key aspect of the style. Uh, by the way, I didn't know exactly. I know Picasso's art, but I don't know his uh, three uh, elements, so I just came up with them. The next step is of the procedure is include an, asso an associated artist movement or era to provide context. And C, mention the primary medium used by the artist. Painting, drawing, etc. Six, and this is still the instructions for Dali. For requests to include specific named private individuals, ask the user to describe what they look li like, since you don't know what they look like. Okay, because it knows that Dali is lacking context regarding specific people, so we need to dis so we need to describe the individual before Dali can paint it. For requests to create images of any public figure referred to by name, create images of those who might resemble them in gender and physique, but they shouldn't look like them. If the, ref the reference to the person will only appear as text out in the image, then use the reference as is and do not modify it. Do not name or directly, indirectly mention or describe copyrighted characters Rewrite prompts to describe, rewrite prompt, this is very interesting, to describe in detail a specific different character with a this, this, uh, different specific color, hairstyle, etc. And the generated prompt sent to Dali should be very detailed and around 100 words long. Again, this is very interesting because it gives us a better understanding about what is the best prompt to send to Dali. We can assume that it should be 100 words long, uh, even if we don't write a prompt that is 100, 100 words long, we can assume that this uh, prompt, the system message is going to generate a shorter prompt or longer, depending on what we initially sent, in order for Dali to produce the best uh, looking image. And now it shares an example, so Dali in Vulcan, this is the prompt and this is the prompt. This is like the JSON and this is the prompt that is going to be used. Now, this is the prompt for creating images from a text only prompt. So it says, it claims the size of the requested image use square as default. If a user requests a wide image, spit out this resolution and this is the resolution that should be this is the output size or aspect ratio for full body port portraits. The number of uh, images to generate, if the user does not specify image, generate one image. The detailed image uh, description, let's move on. Now voice mo mode. Uh, this is something that I don't, haven't used yet, but uh, so let's keep it. Now browser mode. This is a tool that is uh, GPT-4 can use. So you have the tool browser. Use browser in the following circumstances. Circumstances. If the user is asking about current events or something that requires real-time information, such as weather, sports scores, etc. If the user is asking about some term you are totally unfamiliar with, it might be new. If the user explicitly asks you to browse or provide links to references. Given a query that requires retrieval, your turn will consist of three steps. First, call the search function to get a list of results. 
Next. Call uh, m click function to retrieve a, a diverse and high quality subset of these results in parallel. And remember to select at least three sources when using m click. Next, writing a response to the user based on these results. Cite sources using the citation format below. And it offers uh, and it uh, suggests the format. In some cases, you should repeat step one twice if the initial results are not, satisfi or not satisfying and you believe that you can refine the query to get better results. You can also open a URL directly if one is provided by the user. Only use this purpose. Do not open URLs returned by the search function or found on web pages. The browser tool has the following commands. You should always select at least, I skipped because this is becoming too tedious and irrelevant. So next, you should always select at least three and at most 10 pages. Select sources with diverse perspective and prefer trustworthy sources because some pages may fail to, and now because some pages may fail to load, it is fine to select some pages for redundancy even if their content might be redundant. For citing quotes from the browser tool, please render in this format. This is the format, and for long citations, please render in this format. And this is the format. Otherwise, do not render any links. Whew. That was a lot of reading. And this is just very interesting because this prompt is way more comprehensive than any prompts that I usually give. Although I've covered, I have a few videos in my channel covering how we should write better prompts and we have the guidance uh, repository and we have like a um, blog post from OpenAI team and Microsoft team regarding how to structure pro uh, uh, prompts. Still, it is very interesting to see behind the scenes of the prompt uh, of ChatGPT. I also like going into prompts created by the Autogen team so just opening the Autogen repository and going into like all the, the Python files over there and see how clear they write the instructions, how they use a uh, breaking in lines for the LLM to be able to inter in understand better the prompt and how they give examples, do's and don'ts. So my biggest takeaway from this uh, video is I should start talking, writing better prompts prompts should be very comprehensive um, using capital letters, using exclamation marks, using examples, using do's, using don'ts. The more comprehensive your prompt is going to be, you are going to be, uh, get better results. Um, yes, I think that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Obviously, in the comment section, leave your feedback regarding the pace of the content. Um, did you enjoy the video in general? Would you like me to cover more videos about prompting? Any feedback would be highly appreciated. And until next time, keep on automating.